Hello, hello there. My name is Moy with my co-host Corey. We are the real guys, and this is the real show with two ears. Corey, do you like motorbikes? Oh, oh yeah. Do you like jumping around and, and fighting people and, and all the time hitting people with your leg all the time, all the time, all the time, then constantly. Love Marvel's Echo. That's what we're reviewing. That's right. As always, you can uh, watch us on our video version, and you can listen to us on Amazon, Apple, P- P- Podca- Apple Podcasts, Amazon, Spotify, blah, 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 whatever you get, <laughs> wherever you get your audio platforms, we're there as well. How are you doing today, Corey? I'm doing very well, thank you. Excellent. Now, people will remember mm-hmm. that uh, a few weeks ago, we reviewed the first episode of Echo. We did. And now we're back for the rest of the series. And I'm very excited, Corey, because this is a whole new... Whole new wave of Marvel stuff. We've had Secret Invasion. We have. We've had Hawkeye. We did. We've now got Echo. We do. What If is still going on. I think What If second season's probably finished yes. by now. If you're a regular watcher of Marvel, What If? I haven't gone into it yet. Okay, it'd be nice to review it, I think. It'd be nice to review it. I think it'd be very interesting. It's an anthology, so, well, no. I've seen parts of the second season, and they do carry on plots from the first season. So you kind of do have to watch the first season all the way mm. before you can start the second season, I'd say. Okay. But you can kind of jump in on individual episodes, but it's probably best to just look up a guide or something. That's yeah. what people do nowadays, isn't it? Let's go into Echo. Short, yes. only five episodes. Five episodes. Not Echo herself, she's probably tall. But <laughs> but she is it's a short series. Yeah. It's a short series. We've got Aquila Cox as Maya Lopez, who's just fantastic. Yep. She's great. This is, you know, this is a, a second acting gig. You know what her first acting gig was? Go on. Hawkeye. There we go. Okay, because she came in completely fresh. So uh, her friends told her about a, a casting for a Native American woman in her 20s, deaf, and she was an amputee, and she came in there and she she got the role. So, so good for her. It's good for uh, bringing some awareness about deaf culture. Yep. And she's literally everything that Echo is, you know, a character that's been around for years and years. And they couldn't have got anyone better. So I'm very happy for Alakwa Cox, and I hope she gets more... Gets more roles and also more more work as Echo, obviously. Yeah, well, she must do. Cinematic universe. She'd previously worked at Amazon and FedEx warehouses. Wow. So she's she's come right from the bottom. I remember um, a friend when I was learning um, drama who always used to talk about how he felt like actors should do regular jobs <laughs> for like for like humbling experiences. Right. Because I did a presentation about we had to do something about the theatre. And I did a presentation about an actor I like, and I said how he also got a job in between acting jobs mm-hmm. as like a bus driver. And the, and this guy was like, "Oh, I like that. I like when they get a regular job because it's like humbling in it." And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, I suppose it is humbling." So working at Amazon and FedEx, I guess. Hey, it's uh, good good for uh, creative people as yeah, well. But, yeah, but not for great for hours though. No, or, you know, being uh, being uh, <laughs> overworked and underpaid. Yes. In Echo, we see uh, Alapa Cox as Maya Lopez return to her homeland to get back in touch with her Native American roots. And with her is um, Henry Lopez, who's Maya's uncle and uh, William's brother. He's also known as Black Crow. Yeah. And he is in charge of the... Like the roller uh, rink. The roller rink. Yeah. That's right. That's, what a what an 80s thing. Have you have you gone roller skating before? The roller rink. Uh, I've gone ice skating before, but that doesn't count. I, I've been to a roller before. You've been roller before. rinking? Yeah, How I've was been. that? Uh, fine. I didn't fall over. Okay, good. I did spend most of the time uh, on, on, the on the wall. On, on the, the side. wall, yeah. yeah. On the wall, yeah. <laughs> With some support. I, mean, I imagine that if it's... I was about to ask, is it similar to ice skating? I've, I've not been. I've been ice skating several times. I've not been ice skating. Oh, okay. Oh, excellent. So we can't... <laughs> oh, where did you go roller rinking? Uh, literally. Give a, a plug. A village not that far down. Oh, uh, okay. was, that a, uh, was it Fig- Highcombe or Brayton? Yeah, Highcombe Community Centre. Oh, okay. Well, not a sponsored by Highcombe no. Community Centre, but they clearly have a nice roller rink. Yeah, it was pretty good. Oh, I went to the, um, the snow dome. And they're not sponsored by the snow dome. <laughs> uh, but oh, I, went, I went to the snow dome for ice skating. And I was, I was pretty bad the first time I went. Yeah. But the second time I went, I was tried. Someone gave me a piece of advice. They said, just try walking. And mm. I was like, oh, that doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> so I just like started walking. And I was like, oh, I'm pretty good at this, actually. <laughs> because you'd go from walking and you go and you walk away from the side and then you just start skating. And then you start skating. And then as soon as I, I yeah. was up and at them, I was ready. You I see, imagine roller skating something a bit like that. Yeah, see, I could move, but I couldn't go very fast. Oh, right. So yeah, I, no, I, I, wasn't going I, fast I, I could go hands free, but yeah. it would take me a while to get anywhere. Yeah, yeah right. Go on. <laughs> 
Next we have Bonnie. Yep. And she is Maya's sort of best best friend. Um, they were separators, and she ha- and Bonnie is works at the fire station. Yep. She, but she has to return to uh, to Maya's side to take on uh, the force, the antagonistic forces that arrive into their town. Yeah. Good old Fisk. Yeah, good old Fisk. Next we have Biscuits, who's played by a man called Cody Lightning, which yeah. might be the best name I've ever heard. It's a really good name. Yeah, Cody Lightning. Yeah. Cody Lightning plays Biscuits, who is another great named character. He's bringing the thunder. He's a sidekick, yeah, yeah. And he's also got a, got a big, he's got a dog. He's got a big dog. It's called B- Billy, B- oh, Billy Jack. That's Billy it. Jack the dog. Billy Jack the dog, and he's trying to sell his PS5, not the dog. Um, yes. Cody Lightning. He also owns a monster truck, apparently. He does own a monster truck. <laughs> or is it his PS4? He's trying to sell something. He's trying to sell a. I think it's a PS4. PS4. Because he's selling it for a hundred, a hundred like dollars or something. Dollars. Yeah, he wants to sell his PS4 because he's, he messed up the truck. Yeah. In the, this train heist, they have to go. Like, on. I'm going to sell it for 120, and mm. no one buys it. So I'm going to sell it for 100. 100. But next, Vinny D. We've got to talk about some Vinny D. Okay, go on. Uh, it's Wilson. It's Wilson, Mr. Fisk. Mr. Wilson Fisk himself. Fisk. The kingpin, the big man, he's back. He's not in New York City. He's come back to the to the country, to to take Maya back because he believes that you know he, he wants Maya to work with him. Yes, he wants to make her a queen pin. Yes, yes, indeed. And kingpin, he's just pff, star of the show. Really, it's him and Alakwa uh, Cox. Yeah, who are really our two main leads, and they and they carry the uh, they carry the series. You know, especially Vinny D. You got a little bit of Vinny D. He's got that. He's got the bass in his voice. He does. He's got the power. He's got the size. He's got that. He's got the eloquence. He does. You know, I'd like to sit down and have dinner. I was waiting for that to with come back. you, Maya. You have to understand. This city needs a kingpin. You see, well, that's what you do when you do when you do a kingpin impression. As I explained during the first episode, last time, you've got to speak, speak normally in the accent. In like every, every like, like three or four words. Three or four words. You've got to you've got to shout the shout, shout them or say them much more. I believe, I believe, yeah, I was gonna say you you explained it. You have to open your mouth as much as you possibly as much can. As you possibly can to say the word. You have to go. Um, we had him shopping. Didn't we, we did have him shopping. shopping. Yeah. Well, I remember. I remember the gag. <laughs> Here you go. I've got to go and get Maya. We have to cross the street yeah. together to go to the shop to buy some new <laughs> beverages. <laughs> beverages? <laughs> beverages. That's what he wants. Yeah. He's th- you know what? He's a big man. He's thirsty, King He is a thirsty king, yeah. He needs, he, imagine how much water. Is it water weight? Is yeah, it might be. Might you be. could have a lot of water weight. No, no. Obviously, Kingpin needs to go needs to go to the store and buy himself a nice new white suit after beating up the yeah, ice after cream man. Up the ice cream man. <laughs> he also might need to go buy some ice cream because <laughs> they didn't get any. No, we didn't. They just walked away. <laughs> they didn't get any. They just walked away from the ice cream store. Well, what? Well, we have a flash. We have a flashback in episode four. Yeah. That has um, Maya comes out of school. Yeah. And she gets poor, she gets poor, poor little baby Maya. She gets verbally abused by this ice cream guy who says, "I can't hear you." Uh, he's a real jerk. Yeah. So Kingpin goes, "Right, I'll beat you with an inch of your life, then, buddy." Yeah. Or, or kill you with my bare hands. And Kingpin's just a massive man. He's a big there's, man. There's one frame where he gets out of the car and he's walking to, towards the back of this dude, and he's just the whole. It's just his whole shoulders and head, and you're like, "Oh, he's so massive," <laughs> and he's he's. Punching this guy in the alley, and then Maya turns up, and he's like, "Oh, Maya, don't be afraid. Yeah. It's me, Vincent D'Onofrio from Full Metal Jacket, <laughs> like that." Speaking and of jacket, yeah, I, need jacket. A, I need a new suit jacket. <laughs> this, yes, he needs a Full Metal suit jacket. <laughs> that'd well, be helpful, well, actually. Well, in, well, in Daredevil, they have the bulletproof suit. I was going to say that'd so, be very yeah, helpful. In Daredevil, that's like the continuity of why Fisk can like get shot and whatever, and. <laughs> Well, all his dudes can like withstand, withstand bullets. Does he also have like a bulletproof, a, a bulletproof eye? Because he got shot in the face and he's still around. Mm. <laughs> but they don't actually end up getting any ice cream, so maybe no, he just wants to buy some scoops of ice cream as well. Just get in the tub. Have some Hagen Dazs. What? F- yeah, I was gonna say what flavour? Uh, exactly, exactly. Have some Ben and Jerry's Kingpin. I think you'd find it beneficial. Yeah, he seems like a rum and raisin kind of guy. In my Does he? Head. I was gonna yeah. say he seems more like a might like a cookie dough kind of man. Yeah. I think he got a bit of a soft spot for, <laughs> for some cookie dough. <laughs> What kind of Hagen Dazs would you think he'd would you think he'd like? Oh, I've not had Hagen Dazs in ages. No, no, not me. I used to. I I knew someone who was very who was very into the Hagen Dazs. Used to get a small pot, put them in a the microwave. Mm. 
you're supposed to get small pots and you microwave it for about 10 right. seconds. I'm putting putting ice cream in the microwave seems kind of intuitive, Corey. Because it, it's still cold. Oh, yeah, it, yeah, it melts it. But yeah. it melts it a little bit. I wasn't told you had to put hot water on a spoon. Mm, that might work. Is that what people do? Probably. Oh, but, th- but then I was told it could bend the spoon. <laughs> Someone else told me that you put hot water on a spoon, it'll bend the spoon when you put into the mic- when you put into the ice cream. In all fairness, if it's I, block solid, yeah, that hot spoon's not getting in there. I only really get ice cream if I'm out and about. Okay, I like it. Like, you, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when a you're cone on a walk, or like yeah, yeah, a tub. Yeah. You won't get like a four pound tub. Yeah, and take it home. Also, small tubs of ice cream if you're like an ice cream vendor are underrated. I know cones are good and get nice like, crispy. Yeah, cones, yeah, but, like, yeah. Tubs are great. Tubs are great. I just I used to be a cone elitist. I used mm. to be like, oh, you can't have, you can't what handle a cone. What you were afraid of it dripping <laughs> down your hand? Afraid of it dripping down your hand? You're afraid of the cone breaking? Oh, pff, pff, you know, miss me with that kind of yeah. thing. But then after a while, I was like, you know what? Tubs might actually be the way to go because they're more economical. You can yeah. probably fit more in there. Also, you, you can know, with, you, a, with a cone. Part of the ice cream will like go down the cone, yeah. and if you end up like as, uh, as soon as your ice cream starts melting, if you've got a cone, you're in a rush. Going to, yeah, you're in a rush. If you've got a tub, with a tub, you can't. Oh. You can like, slurp it. You can you can enjoy it more. <laughs> and I was like, in the later holidays, I was like, I'm just gonna go and get a tub. Yeah. Not because I'm against cones. I am for cones. But as a, you know, as a I was about to say, as an alpha male, <laughs> you understand that, like kingpin is, like kingpin is, yeah. as an alpha male like Wilson Fisk, an ice cream tub is far more yeah. economical for your ice cream. Yes, it is. For your uh, ice cream consumption. If you're eating it quick. A cone is fine, but if you're having like a stroll and you're eating some a ice cream, and you want to stop and look at something, or or yeah. you want to stop and enjoy the local architecture, you might want a tub, as one does. So that so that's your lesson, guys. Get tubs. Get a tub of ice cream. Get a tub of ice cream. You know, I'm you're making me peckish for you. Might have to go out for one after this. <laughs> Together, what do good ice cream? Think about it while we're thinking. Okay. What place to do good ice cream that's near us while we do uh, <laughs> while we finish this episode? Maya has a great train heist she gets on the back of fisk's train she does and she has to uh disc disconnect the carts or uh well no she puts bombs on the train sorry yes she puts bombs on the train to destroy his shipping facility because it's going to one of his armories in new york yep so with the black knife cartel yes which sounds just sounds like more of a criminal name to me it does but led by a guy called zane yep. who's just a, a real a real grub as you like kind of guy He's just, you know, bold, and he's like, oh, I'm not saying, hey, you better watch out, sunshine. Yeah. Like that. He's, I think the act, the actor was something else I've seen. Like mm. He's Welsh or Irish or something. And he dispatches some dudes to help unload the crate, but it triggers Mai's bomb, and it blows up and destroys the whole facility. Yeah. So Mai has to get a new prosthetic leg from Scully, who's her grandfather, who's just sure. a really nice, kind, just gentle nice man. fella. I was worried something was going to happen to him. Yeah. He's so nice and, and wholesome. He was to helping her out every every wit's end, and I was like, "Come on, this guy, this guy's, this guy's gonna have a tug on his back by the end of the series." But yeah. no, he's fine. No, he, yeah, he's that right. is generally a theme with everybody in this show. There is as as big as the threat is of Kingpin, everyone kind of ends up okay. Yeah, nothing really happens. No, other, other than like, the other than the bad guys. Other than other than Maya and ridding, Zane, ridding and Zane and Maya who gets shot in the head. He does. He does. And Maya. <laughs> Maya ridding herself of Kingpin's control. Yeah. So she can kind of go and do her own thing now as a hero. But like, every, everyone else, like no one gets hurt, no one no, gets injured. No, no, no one gets injured, no one dies. Nothing, nothing. The dog survives. Like that. I was, you've got to, the dog's got to survive. Yeah. I mean, come on, Pizza Dog from Hawkeye. It's got to, they've got to have a high <laughs> dog play date together. All the yeah. Marvel dogs. All the great Marvel dogs have to come and play together. We get to keep having flashbacks to Maya's childhood. One where she just... It hits a woodpecker with a slingshot. Yeah, why not? It's just animal abuse, really. Yep. I think the mum, the, the mum should have been more concerned about that. But uh, Taloa, who's who's Maya's mum, reminds her that you shouldn't hit birds with slingshots. And then she, but she puts her healing powers on Correct. it. Correct. She's got the healing power of the. Ch- I don't want to say this wrong. Choctaw, Choc, Choc, Choctaw Nation, or it's it's the indigenous people of. Yeah. The, she's got uh, then. She's got those healing powers passed down from 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 mother to mother. Yep. So she is allowed to to to, to be the healer because it. Do we see Ch- Chaffa, who is um. She used to be the leader of the people, and it's from this thing called um. Na- I'm gonna get this is a lot of indigenous mm-hmm. um. There's a lot of indigenous history and heritage, and it it mentions here the uh, the nanny the nanny. Wire, 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 
which is an ancient platform mound in southern Winston County, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. You can look it up, Corey. It's N A N I H W A I Y A. N A N Y. And it's constructed by the indigenous people during the Middle Woodland period, uh, around 300 to 600 CE, since the 17th century. The Choctaw and Chickasaw people have uh, venerated the nan the nanny wire or wahea. I've got it in front of me. Excellent. Look at that. That is that is where the uh, ch the origins of the Choctaw people are said to have emerged from in the series Echo. Oh. Where Chaffa Chaffa comes from. Nice. We see in the finale that there's a pow the great powwow festival, mm -hmm. which is just like a great fun time. People are dancing. Great. People are jigging around. There's there's great food and great costumes. It's wonderful, and. Maya's grandmother makes her a, a ceremonial suit to wear, yep. which becomes her Echo suit. And because she is the Echo, people wondering, where does the name Echo come from? Not for the fact that she's deaf and yeah. you know, can't hear echoes, but because she is an Echo of the the legacy of her people, yes. the embodiment of that legacy of a healer will echo through the uh, her dynasty to her now. And she uses those powers to heal Fisk's eye, Yes. Bring his eye back to normality because he used to have a. Or was it like black or was yeah. it black with red? Because she actually shot him through the eye. Shot him through the eye, yeah. And it was like all messed up and there was loads of veins and stuff. Yep. And. But she heals him and he gets like he gets flashed back to Daredevil season one. Yeah. Where he sees his younger self murder his father with the hammer that comes back from Daredevil. I'm really glad they kept that. That was yeah. very integral for him. You know, if you've seen how much of Daredevil have you seen? Little bits. Little bits. But you remember that part yeah. of, yeah, from the first season when we get Kingpin's origins, yeah. And brings him back to that. Then Maya says goodbye to her family at the end of the powwow yep. and leaves Tamaha. Yes. But then our mid credit scene, we see Wilson Fisk. He's on his plane heading back to New York and he sees that, uh, basically, that news report is, like, built for him. Yeah. It's like, New York needs a new mayor. We need a bare-knuckle brawler. We need a guy who's going to get in there who's not connected to the political system. We need you, Wilson Fisk, effectively. Yes. And <laughs> Fisk goes, hmm, there's something here. So Fisk decides to uh, run, run for New York mayor. So that's going to be, and we know that is going to be the plot of Daredevil Born Again. Yes. Because we've actually seen shots of Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin in the mayor suit, in the mayor suit, you know. So he's, so he's going to get that. But uh, back to the greater story of Echo, we know that um, this is a story from the spin-off, uh -huh. and we might get a little bit more of bits of Echo here and there as uh, as she does move away from her homeland. So we're going to see where she pops up again. Yes. It appears to be leading into Daredevil Born Again, which we, which apparently there's her, there was a bit of a mix-up about recently. There was a bit right. of a kick-up okay. because all the staff and all the writing staff basically all got taken out. Right. Not like killed, but like they all got removed from the production of the series. Right. And there was a bunch of new people coming in for the production. Mm -hmm. And they started to actually make some improvements because they brought back the original actresses and, and actors from uh, the first Daredevil series, like the guy that played Foggy and Deborah right. Wall, who I'm a big fan of, who played Karen Page. Uh, obviously, Vincent Nofrio, we know he's back. Charlie Cox, we know he's yep. back. I think they'll be bringing in um, Alakwa Cox again for a okay. cameo's Echo. That'd be nice, kind of maybe similar to how yeah. Daredevil appeared in this. Yeah. Because it was only in episode one, only for the fight scene. So yep. maybe we'll get a similar thing where Daredevil is like against a bunch of opponents and he needs some help, and then Echo comes, comes in to save him or something like that. Yeah. That'd be cool. And that'd also connect people to like, oh, hey, go watch Echo. Yep. It's on Spotlight or whatever it is. Yeah, damn, Marvel just, Spotlight. That's just the watch new, it. That's the new phrase. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of that? A more condensed, shorter series of a character not widely connected with the MCU to have their own stories within the MCU, Corey? Yeah, hey, it's fine. Go for it. Gives people starting points. That's what it does. Helps people uh, join in. And we don't have to know a whole can... four-part lore no, no. of every single stage of Marvel. Yeah. I mean, it could have been intended to always be a miniseries. Yeah. But or, or Echo's supposed to have a, a larger role in other MCU properties. I think that's what it was meant to be. Yeah. Like, she appears in Hawkeye. She appears in Daredevil. And she, she gets her own just little series just to kind of bridge the gap, I guess is the phrase, that what we need. And we don't have any word on if there's a season two. Mm -hmm. um, we're not sure about that. But according to um, this article from the, from the Radio Times, I'm going to cease... 
um, I'm going to quote here, we see that, and I, really, I thought it was written by a guy called Daniel Craig, but actually it's written by a guy called David Craig. <laughs> Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig, like James Bond has written this article. <laughs> God, he's taken a drop, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he has, he has. Did Glass Onion, now he's writing articles. Now he's, <laughs> now he's working for Radio Times. <laughs> no, it says that there isn't any plans for season two. There isn't any plans for season two. Um... And it was described as a mini series, not a season, mm. which usually suggests that there's only it's only intended for a single run. Yeah, I mean it's always Marvel; they can change their mind. Yeah, like yeah. Moon Knight, I think it was meant to be like two seasons or something, yeah. and then they moved it to one. And it said that it could be influenced by Echo's critical and commercial performance mm. because they released it all, all at, at once. once, and that is something that Marvel doesn't tend to do. No, Marvel likes to go, "Oh, here you get one a week, yep. and you'll sit there and you'll like it," but. My, and I've mentioned this before, whenever we talk about an original streaming property, yep. that I feel like it shouldn't be judged on what it gets week to week anyway. Yeah. Because that's why people have sort of said that Kenobi isn't going to get another series, because like it didn't do well week to week. Yep. But, like in, but when people want to binge, and people will want to binge, because that's what the culture we have fostered, yep. looking at somebody, you Netflix, I'm looking at you. Because that's what this is what you've done, eventually. Yeah. It's what it's made, because it's made people want everything and want it all at once. And that's what Echo that's what Echo helped with. But well well, Echo just came out all at once. They were like, oh nice, that's convenient. But it also creates something else and it creates the fact that the streaming numbers will come in and they will be decently high because people yes. watch it all at once. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to something that gets week to week that might not do so well. Yeah. According to them. I mean hopefully it's done well. I'd mm. hope so. I, w- I won't mind another season of it. And Daredevil Born Again is supposed to be the, the restart of the Defenders, so I've heard, Ooh. of these sort of street-level heroes, because uh, Kevin Feige or someone's come out and said that um, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Jessica Jones is all canon. Right, Daredevil, yeah. that all happened. So that means that it's all it's all canon to our current MCU, which it always was. Yeah. But then someone came back and said it wasn't. Yeah. They're like, oh, well, then it was like an alternate universe or whatever, whether the Defenders existed in MCU, but it's not our MCU. And then it was all like a what if scenario. But now it's like, yeah, this all this is it's basically back to being in the timeline. Yeah. Is what I mean. It's back to being in the timeline. I think that um, the executive producer Brad Winderbaum. Uh, teased via uh, talking on screen rounds. He said that I can't talk too much, uh, only that one of the chapters in Wilson Fisk's life, this is a crucial one, I and mean, it will set the stage for some remarkable ways of what's coming next. Charlie Cox as Daredevil, he's also a firm fan favourite. Yep. And this is where Kingpin, uh, see if Kingpin can actually beat uh, Daredevil. But uh, I won't be surprised if this, this sort of trio of Echo, Daredevil, and Kingpin remain in the next few shows that come out for this sort of street level low level hero you know as yeah. I say the defenders only defend New York yes. and nowhere else nope if a crime's happening outside of New York if you're, if you're getting robbed in New Jersey yeah. Luke Cage can't help you now as soon as they cross that border yeah cross that border <laughs> it's like anymore. Iron Fist Iron Fist's chasing these bank robbers right and they're going <laughs> towards the New they're literally there. it's a foot chase yeah and they get across the new, they cross the border to New Jersey, and Iron Fist can go no more. No, nope. it's ah. Uh, he can, oh, you've got to escape me, guys. I can't, can't go over this it. line. It's New York only. That's whoever's down there now. Yeah, not my problem. No. Nope. Not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're getting on the other side of the street. Yeah. And, help me, help me, Jessica Jones, I'm getting robbed. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I can't do anything. If you can come over here. Yeah, come over here. If you can, like, get, get him over here, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it, but... Unfortunately, no. If you're in New Jersey, I, I can't help you. Yeah. New York State, I can't. I yeah. can't help you really, because it's only New York. It's only New York City, isn't it? It's only New York City. So if you're on, you know, Boulevard 46 or whatever, and you're outside of New York, and you're in New York State, <laughs> if you're in Albany, she can't help you. If you're in Schneckertaddy or whatever it's called, they can't help you out. They can't help me out very much. No. If you're in Albany, if you're in the uh, what's what's that what's the uh, the steam pams line um uh, up in new york up in new york really because i'm from uh i'm from utica and i've it. never heard of the uh, phrase steam pams oh no not in utica no it's an albany expression so they can't help you if you're in utica no nope. <laughs> but let's give let's give echo a real rating yes um i the full series yes do, do you remember what we gave it on our first episode did you look back <sighs> I think 
I believe I gave episode one an eight point five, and I think you gave it a seven. I gave it a seven because I expected it to get better. Yeah, it did. I very much impressed me. Um, my only criticism I would have, and yes, I am going to lay this down now, Ooh. is that the finale didn't really change much. No. Sure. Episode one, great. Two, great. Yeah. Four, great. Three, great. Episode four is probably the best. Okay. But episode five just kind of wrapped it up. Like if they'd made episode four half an hour longer, they could have done it. They could have done it in four episodes. Yeah. If they'd made each one of them a bit longer, if you took like the last 20 minutes from the first from the episode and then yeah. moved it on to the second episode. Or wait, no. Gone backwards. Sorry. If you made the for if you made the fourth episode longer by half an hour, the third episode longer by twenty minutes, and done that for each one, then you'd have just got like an hour worth. Because television can be an hour long now. I mean, look at Game of Thrones. Yeah. You know, television can be as long as you want it. So it's like watching films now. Yep. So I don't think there's any problem with making the show longer. Yeah, I mean, I kind of had the same thing. I got to episode five, and like when I was watching it, I was like, oh. Probably got one more episode left. It just, yeah, you know, it felt like I hadn't. And I was like, no, yeah, I won't yeah. miss the last one. I was like, oh, okay. It didn't quite feel like an ending. No. Like a finale. Mm. Um, but overall, I still enjoyed the series. Um, I don't think the whole series is going to get an 8.5. No. Um, I'm teetering maybe on more of a. somewhere in the 7.5, mm-hmm. 8 mark, somewhere in that realm, I think, for me. I know what I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to give it. What, what are you going to I'm going to go for the 7.5. Okay. I, I, might, I might I'm join bringing you it up by 7.5. I was going to go for the 8, but I thought, well, we've, well, what you've just said about the finale, where you yeah. wanted another episode and you just stopped, was um, was enough for me to think about yeah. that. But again, I'm not going to discredit anyone that worked on this series. I think it's an amazing representation piece for not only um, the deaf community, but also uh, mm-hmm. the people in the Atlanta metropolitan area. You know, the... Um, Georgia and Tennessee and everyone who's, you know, Oklahoma, great Native American roots yep. and embracing family and community. Uh, the yeah, we have we talked about this a little bit before the be- we talked about this a little bit before the episode actually started. <laughs> but the theme song burning mm-hmm. to this show is performed by the Yeah Yeah Yeahs, who I haven't heard for a long time. In two thousand. Most notably known for their uh, hit hit song Heads Will Roll. So if you've not listened to that in a while, go back and listen to it because it's great. Uh, I do, however, like them. It's from their album It's Blitz uh-huh. in 2008. And what were you doing then? I had my head down the toilet. Yeah, I was uh, in prime school. Z- yeah, <laughs> known for their songs Zero and Heads Will Roll and Skeletons, all from that album. But yeah, they're still doing stuff and it's 2020, 2022, wow. 2024. So it's amazing. Their last album came out in uh, 2022, wow. only, a couple of, only a couple of years ago. Uh, the album Cool It Down, and they, it's their second single. On, on the, it's, Burning is their second single on that album, which they performed on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Great. As part of the show's week-long residency at the Brooklyn Academy of Music. Nice. So go, yeah, yeah, yes. Good for you guys. They're so 2000s. Look at, <laughs> uh, look, if you can look them up, Corey, look at their uh, profile picture on Wikipedia. It tells you what you need to know. It is incredibly 2000s. It's dingy bathroom... Yeah, dudes, dudes in a in a buttons in a like a top button undone top. That guy's in a tight graphic tee. Yeah, she's got bangs for days. It is so two thousands. I love the yeah yes. I need to listen. I need to listen to more of them. To be honest, they've been around since two thousand. Crazy that they've been that they've been around for like twenty four years, and they're still together, and they're still making music. Yeah, I think they're great. They just look like oh my god. Google Images is even is even better. <laughs> Look at that! These guys are so two thousands, and that you know that's their aesthetic. It's back, I hear. I hear being two thousands is incredibly back. Is it? Yeah. Is it mainstream now? It's mainstream now. Is 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 like would would emo me not be picked on anymore? No, no, you'd be cool. <laughs> Great. You'd be cool now, Great. emo. You would be cool now, Corey. Yeah, because look at that. Look at that hairdo. Yeah. Look at that. Part. That was like. Look at that spiky hair. Look at that spiky hair. Look at that guy's tight graphic T-shirt. <laughs> Look at her bangs. <laughs> they're, they're so far over her face, she looks like Sia. It's it's incredible. This is what I want to be, right? Right, okay. You, you want to be... I'll be the guy with the weird yeah, hair, yeah, yeah. and you can be the guy with the glasses and the tight graphic tee, right? That seems to fit. Okay. You've, you've almost got it going right now, actually. 
You've almost got to go right now. You've got the eyebrows. You've got your hair's too. You've got. You need a bit more hair. If old Corey, old hair Corey could yeah. probably pull that off. Old hair Corey could probably pull that off. I can pull off that dress though. With the zebra, she's got like crosswalk lines on the dress. Right. And it's like blue, very very. So, bright. so you, you, you want to be Nick Zinner? Do I? Yeah. Nick, no. You know that name is incredibly two thousand. <laughs> I do want to be Nick Zinner, apparently. I uh, I'm Brian Chase. Brian Chase, which is also incredibly two thousand, <laughs> isn't it? Brian Chase. It's me. I'm Brian Chase. Um, I don't know who Karen O could be. Someone else, but. I want to be Nick Zinner. Oh yeah, <laughs> Nick Zinner. Look at that. I've got a bit. I've got a can of Red Bull and there's some sunglasses. You have indeed. And my funny hair. What else is he? And, and oh, you're naughty smoking. I am. Apparently so. <laughs> I'm also a member of the Rentals. I'm playing with drums and look like I'm bored. <laughs> you are bored. <laughs> You are incredibly bored. I'm a vegan. Oh, oh. oh that's not going to get me very far. I'm more so as a portrait of Peter. I mean, obviously, you know, I get, I don't, you know, I don't support animal cruelty in any in any form. Yeah. But I'm definitely not a vegan. Uh, I don't, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what Brian Chase is. Okay, I, Brian I, I can't, Chase, I can't though. find much. He sounds like a novel detective. You're going to be. He performed at a jazz festival. Oh, look, do you like jazz? You, you like jazz? <laughs> can't quite say I'm a fan of jazz. You like, you like jazz. Uh, yeah, there's nothing really much in Wikipedia, to be honest. But Echo is rated a 7.5 by the both of us. That yes. leads us to the weekly rec, and it's Corey. It's me. It's not the AAS. It's not Nick Zinner. It's not Nick Zinner. Or Brian Chase. Oh, okay, good, good, I'm glad. Um, that's not where my weekly rec is right, yeah. I thought you were about to recommend me a song by the AAS. No. Uh, instead, I'm going down the route now. The last time I went down the um, Stardust... And Daredevil and yeah, Charlie yeah. Cox route. This time I'm going down, but obviously, like we said, the main person, I'm going down the Vincent D'Onofrio route. Vinny D, Vinny D. Because there's not many people in this series that have been in uh, much else. You've okay. Essentially, you've got Charlie Cox and Vinny D. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much Cox, it. This is a second role ever. Exactly. And a, lot of, and a lot of the others that play Native Americans have been in uh, Native American films and I haven't seen them. Okay, okay. Um, so I was going through Vincent D'Onofrio's full list of stuff, mm-hmm. like you mentioned before, Met- Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. I was like, oh, what else has he been in? And I was like, oh, well, you know, he's been in... A Law and Order Criminal Intent, very yeah. famous for that. Uh, he's been in uh, a couple of video games, Dishonored yeah. 2. Men in Black. Uh, Lego Jurassic World, I think he was in. He was in the, actually, he's in the actual Jurassic World. In the actual Jurassic Corey. World. <laughs> Um, the Lego version, yeah, yeah, Lego Jurassic World. Yeah, the best, best, best Jurassic World there is. Yeah, he's in the original Jurassic World. Where he plays Vic, Vic Hoskins, Vic Haskins. He's like some kind of army general, I think. Right. He wears a big belt. He, I remember he wears a big belt buckle, and he adjusts his belt buckle like this every time he's every time he's standing somewhere. He was in Miami Vice. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to recommend one that people have probably already seen, and one that you just mentioned. I'm recommending with 1997 Men in Black. Oh. Because it's just a great film. Yes. He plays Edgar. Edgar, yeah, that's right. Tommy Lee Jones is in it. Tommy Lee Jones. Will Smith is in it. Will Smith, you be careful. Is it uh, the one with the dog, or is that a different Men in Black? Uh, Which one's got the dog? It's the first Men in Black he's is in, it the first isn't it? one. With, um, what's he called? It's the first Men in Black. Frank. And he's actually, a lot of people actually wouldn't recognise him. What, Vincent Nofia? No, Men in Black, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> a lot of people, because you know, he's a lot thinner. He's, he he's, is, yeah. He's not got the kingpin size. He's, he's got, got a he's messed got up a face. beard and hair as beard well. And hair. He's got a messed up face. He's not like the classic Vincent D'Onofrio that a lot of people would recognise. Yeah. He looks a lot different. So the, you've, I think you've made a great pick there. Um, but yeah, it's what what not to like. It's just a nice, fun, kind of, mm. you know, cheesy 90s. And some of the pictures, this is all like Stan Winston stuff, you know. Yeah. Stan Winston, who will appear in one of another film we're going to be reviewing pretty soon. But Stan Winston is just a mas- the master of, of visual practical effects. Yep. The master of makeup and masks and and practical effects. Obviously, the one where his mouth, the very famous one where his mouth opens in the in the in the car, and even some of the behind the scenes stuff. Just seeing the modelling around Vincent D'Onofrio's head, and looking at like the eyes and the skin, and the scalpiness. It's just oh, it's just it's all great. Yep. What a trooper Vincent Ophio is, obviously. He's oh, committed yeah. he's committed to a physical performance yep. as always. 
And that's what you want to see with an actor, you know. He, he's committed to that physical point. He's committed to, yeah, put me in the big white suit and the big <laughs> the big fat suit and I'll be kingpin. Yeah. Yeah, put me in this big mask and, uh, and the mask and the skin graft and whatever and I'll be this big alien guy. It's it's just great. I'm a big, mass, massive fan of Vinny we D are. here. Big fans of Vinny D. Um, so I'm going to give Men in Black uh, an 8.5. Oh, excellent. Very strong, very high rate. It's a really good film. Classic Men in Black. So, will we be back? With Men in Black? Are the Men in Black back? Are we going to get back in black? Are we back in black? Back in black. Back in black. <laughs> back in black. With Echo. Yes. Um, when Daredevil Born Again eventually comes out, if it does, if it does ever come out, we will end up <laughs> reviewing... Well, you know, that's what you got to say with these I mean, yeah. things, you know, With what happened with Jonathan you, Majors, you, you, you never can't know. be too sure. With things that are eventually going to actually air. Yeah. But if uh, Daredevil Born Again, whenever Daredevil Born Again comes out, We'll, we'll take a look at it, I we think. Will. I think I'm going to be very excited with what Daredevil Born Again has to offer us for the MCU. So we want to thank you very much for uh, tuning in, watching and and listening. And uh, we will leave you with our review of Echo. It's, it's, it's been a good one, Corey. It has. It's been a good one. Thank you very much. It is a goodbye from me. Goodbye. And a goodbye from Corey. Goodbye.